In my November GCC mocks in year 11, I got a three in chemistry, a six in biology, and one mark into a seven in physics. I failed chemistry in November year 11. Flash forward two months to my mocks in January, I got nine in biology, nine in physics, and an eight in chemistry. And flash forward to my actual exams, I got three nines in each of my sciences. I did separate triple science. In chemistry, the same subject that I failed six months before, I got 15% into a nine. That's not just a nine, that's, that's a 10. So in this video today, what I'm gonna be doing is giving you the key to lock in to GCC science. Make sure you're subscribed, okay? Make sure you leave a like. I'll see you in future videos. My aim is just to help you in this channel get the best grades possible. So let's get straight into this then with point number one. And point number one for science is you really have to know your topics. This is so important. Get out a textbook, look at the contents pages, really, really just get familiar with your topics. Get familiar with what's on paper one, what's on paper two, just all of that. You have to know your topics. From there, you need to find your weak topics. All right. I was constantly processing the topics I was weak at. There may be ones you might be better at. So you might be really good at photosynthesis, but you might be really bad at chemistry, quantitative chemistry. So you have to know the topics really well and then actually focus your vision on your weak points, especially because we don't have crazy long left. That's very important. Next up is you need to learn the content. So learning content for GCC science, I would recommend these three things. Number one, Seneca. That is the number one. Seneca is brilliant. It's basically, if you don't know it before, I've got a video tutorial on Seneca. I'd recommend it a lot, but especially for science. It is basically this interactive kind of course, and you can just click through it, do topics. So I did a, a stupid amount of Seneca. I'll put them up now, my times for each GCC subject in science in Seneca, how much I spent on them. So Seneca is really good. I'd recommend doing that. Just sit down, pick your week topic, go through the Seneca. Number two, YouTube. All right. Three science lessons or cognito. Usually people like one or the other. I like three science lessons. I ask people, people often ask me, do I recommend cognito? Yeah, it is also good. I like free science lessons though. I literally watched all his videos probably about twice. Okay. But especially like literally all of them in the final days up to the exam, I just watched. All right. That's particularly useful if you don't, if you really don't understand something in science. Seneca's great revision, but to actually kind of learn and understand free science lessons is really good. And then my final point is use your teacher, use class. All right. So if I was really stuck, I remember taking in some questions to my teacher to ask for some specific help during break time. So that's OK. That's a way of learning. And in class, obviously, you learn too. So that's how you learn the content, in my view. And if you really put your mind to it, you can learn almost anything in GCC science. Nothing is crazy apart from physics, electricity, I hated and the motor theory. So there's still stuff that I hate and found difficult. That's fine. All right. Learn as literally as much as you can. If there is a tiny topic that you think I really can't do this. In my view, it's better to focus on other topics and hope that one doesn't come up. OK, number three, test yourself. This is really important and more importantly is test yourself at the right time. A lot of students make the mistake of kind of once they've learned a topic there and then they print out a practice paper and just do it. They go through the questions on that. I wouldn't do that. What I would do is learn it on one day and then in my planner. All right, it's not a Henry Brown video if I don't mention getting a planner. I would in like a week's or two weeks time pencil in questions on that topic. So when you do a topic, do the questions in a week's or two later, because of course you're going to remember everything straight after you do it. It's actually better for your brain for recap. That's really an underrated piece of revision advice is you need to do the questions afterwards. Test yourself regularly on those topics and keep track. As you can see here, these are all the papers and I kept track of everything. I made notes of what was going wrong. So that's very important to test yourself. Point number four then is flashcards. This really helped with my memory. As you're starting to hopefully see with science, I basically just threw everything at it, okay? Seneca, YouTube, flashcards, practice questions, all sorts of stuff there. So for flashcards, I wrote a lot of science flashcards, okay? I wrote a crazy amount, probably too much actually, but write loads of flashcards. I just got the CGP book and I've done a video on flashcards if you want a bit more detail. And I literally just wrote down questions from that, answers on the back and just went through everything. I would focus on the specific difficult topics or maybe just flick through things, right, I don't know this bit. Or the more papers you do, the more stuff you see comes up. So focus on what I call high yield topics, but make sure you're making flashcards. That brings me nicely to the sponsor of today's video, which is brilliant.org. 
Now, brilliant is a great way of learning maths and science and kind of recapping it and going through that daily science. I always talk about daily, Corbett maths daily and doing the importance of daily maths. So the way brilliant works is there, there are thousands of visual courses online that you can do and you slowly go from a foundation level all the way up to quite complicated maths and science. For example, they have a visual algebra course or lots and lots of scientific courses as well. So on physics, mechanics, for example. So what I would be doing is going through Brilliant daily. I'd install it on my phone, I'd make sure to log into Brilliant and I'd be doing that daily. It's six times more effective than just watching a YouTube video or a lecture because you get to really interact with it. So it's really important if you want that deeper scientific understanding to do Brilliant.org. If that sounds interesting, then click the link in the description or go to Brilliant.org forward slash Henry Brand for 20% off a free for a premium annual subscription or 30 days free. That will take you into a lot of the exams. So definitely test Brilliant and start doing that daily. You really want to work hard for GCC science. My next point then is to repeat and review closer to the exams. So when you get close to the exams, that's when you go over topics again. What I also did, I don't know if anyone has Educate, but I just spammed Educate questions. I did like 500 Educate questions, small little flashcards like that. Makindo, I also recommend. That's an app where you can, I, I often work with them, where you can kind of go through and just do loads and loads of questions. It's all about firing yourself with questions right at the end. In the final weeks, I asked my teacher to print off. She was amazing and printed off these like massive sheets of so many questions. And I just went through them and marked them. And that really, like that final push, after I'd done all the learning, all of everything, just banging through some questions was so helpful because a lot of questions in science are very repetitive. They come up again and again. So that just gave me like the backbone. Like I knew I was walking into the exam knowing like most of the stuff I was very, very confident with. So that's obviously very important too. That then is the key to GCC science, the key that can help you lock in. I hope that video was helpful. It really isn't as hard as you think, although I do want to stress science took about 40% of my revision. So a lot of my revision was GCC science. And that should show you that it really is quite a lot. I think students neglect that a bit. They kind of treat it as like maths. But remember, science is either three grades or two grades, depending on what you do. So you should be spending double the time on than on maths or something like that. It really did take up a lot of my revision. If you're interested in seeing my year 11 plan and what I was up to, how I did it, how I revised and notice, you'll notice on that, that a lot of that is science, then check the link in my description as well. I'm selling this £4.99, big digital file with lots and lots of advice. So make sure to check that out and make sure to buy that. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.